So I'm from Fort Myers, Florida. I was fully out since I was 15. So I was like, girl, sister, honey, Mary, like nothing's gonna hold me back. I basically knew when I became an adult at 18 that I would have to provide for myself. And I felt like the ABT program was a way for me to eat. I was renting a room with a trans couple and they kind of took me in, let me stay there and pay rent. And that's sort of how I first got EBT and I got acclimated to the system. They had a, like a three month old daughter and like they were just struggling to make ends meet and eight months had gone by and I was sustaining myself, but I was slowly like running out of options as far as like career, how am I gonna live? You know, my mother had passed away like four months earlier and it was just a lot. So for me, I knew that the opportunity wasn't really where I was. It was in a bigger city. And you know how they say, follow the money. So I did. Cross country. <laughs> I love New York. Always fell in love with the idea of New York, the fact that you could be a rebel. Like, they have such a mix of people here. For the most part, I was on the Upper West Side. There's a shelter there that I stayed at until I got my apartment. But I was pounding the pavement. I was doing the best I could. EBT is kind of like one of the few bright points of being homeless because at the end of the day, you know that you have food. You know that you have something to barter. A lot of people barter with food stamps and it sort of got me out of a few rough patches because I just didn't have enough on me when I first started. And I had suitcases and like, you have to pay for a train metro. You have to make every appointment. You have to run around the city and like exhaust yourself and then try to eat in the meantime. EBT. It's sort of like a debit card that only certain places accept, like delis, grocery stores, and as of recently, farmer's markets. To receive EBT benefits, you have to qualify for SNAP, which is the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. In New York City, the max amount one person can receive is $192 a month. The income caps for SNAP eligibility in New York are strict. For a single person to qualify, they need to make under 16 k a year. This can create challenges for people when they're choosing their work, not wanting to make too much and lose their eligibility. When I was homeless, I would have to get jobs that were off the books so I could keep my benefits. It became more and more difficult to make ends meet. I will say that maybe like six out of 10 people that I knew that were on EBT, that were trans women, were also doing sex work. Sometimes my roommate in the Bronx needed like 20, 30 bucks or she was short and she had EBT too, but we would spot each other when we needed to. So that's kind of how we got by for a lot of it because we were doing sex work. So it's like, if a date doesn't come or if a date like backs out, you still have to eat. Like you still have to do what you gotta do. Like. When I was living in the Bronx, I met this beautiful girl who was a friend of a friend. I'd never heard of her before, or at least as far as I knew. I was like, Andrea, like, who is that? I could pretty much already tell that like we were gonna probably like each other. We started living together about a year ago. Andrea and me were just trying to figure it out, like figure it all out, figure out living together, figure out holding down jobs. I was applying for SSI, so like things were tough. I basically relied on EBT throughout all last winter because it was so hard to try and like 
manage like a monthly food budget when everything is so expensive and like only one of you works. It's, it's even harder, I think, managing as a couple. So I took what I didn't use and it would definitely like cook meals for us. Because um, either way, when it's your family, you understand you can't really afford to go without. I haven't lived here that long, but I do love Brooklyn in the sense that there's way closer options. It wasn't all big chain supermarkets. You know, you have co-ops, you have obviously like food bazaars. Having lived it as a kid, I sort of learned how to like make things stretch. Obviously pasta is one thing, a lot of pasta, a lot of, a lot of rice and beans. What else? Breakfast burritos. <laughs> Huge fan of breakfast burritos. I would definitely say stick to the basics as much as possible. I think you'll sustain yourself more if you have a lot of smaller meals rather than like, I'm gonna sit down at a table and have lunch because who has time for that? Usually most people are working, you know. This is a city where anything can happen. And I shudder at the thought to think of like anything that could happen or a complication. And then we're surviving on EBT for a while again, you know? And we've kind of gotten to the point where we have been able to take care of ourselves and we have a system down. Um, but it is so easy to fall off that horse and it's easy to, to lose it. <laughs> Instinctually, I'm like trying to catch the crumbs, and then it sort of <laughs> became like hero worship in a way where I felt very Grecian because I'm like beholding the bowl Aww. to the queen. Thank you. I'm gonna. <laughs> you know, these aren't half done. No, they're really good. These are the best.